Hi. Welcome to Anaprime Recap. Do you experience something so traumatic that you end up losing your memory? During the night, you dream of a hellish caterpillar, which serves as a clue to discover the cause of your amnesia. In today's video, we'll recap more tales from Master Junji Ito. We will begin our journey with the events of the tale, Gentle Goodbye. During childhood, Akeda Riko always had nightmares about her father dying. When this happened, the girl would cry desperately until wake up. Her biggest fear was the thought that one day she might lose him. A few years later, she married Tokura Makoto and moved in with her husband's family. However, the girl was never welcomed by Makoto's parents and grandparents. The only person in that house who considered her as part of the family was little Tomoka, her sister-in-law. After dinner, while walking through the corridors, the girl spots two elderly people in one of the rooms. Makoto reveals that those are her great-grandparents and they didn't use to walk around the house as they were too old. Riko greets them, but they remain silent and the girl notices that their faces are very pale. Maybe this is just another consequence of age. That night, she had a nightmare about her father in a hospital bed. The man was in his last moments of life and asks Riko to be happy with her husband. Then, the girl starts crying and screams for him, until she is woken up by Makoto. Apparently, those nightmares she had as a child never went away. The next morning, Riko observes her new family reunited. Everyone seemed happy and she didn't understand why they didn't accept her. Walking through the house, the girl notices how big that place is. Which was strange, since there weren't many people living there. Suddenly, the girl spots a terrifying ghost in one of the rooms. When she tells Makoto about the event, the young man reveals that this was probably his great-great-grandmother, who is 125 years old. Riko is terrified and asks how the woman could live for so long. So her husband says that his great-great-grandfather and his mother also lived in that house. They were very pale and almost disappearing but if you look hard you can still find them. Makoto explains that those weren't her real bodies, but after images. The following year, Ryuzu, the young man's grandfather, died and all the family gathered for his funeral. Even Riko's father attended the ceremony and the girl was very happy to see him again. They later say their goodbyes and the couple returns to the living room, where all the family members have gathered. However, something very strange happens. What was supposed to be a farewell actually became a resurrection event, or nearly so. Makoto's father asks everyone present to join hands and join forces to mentalize Ryuzu's presence. The old man had been cremated, but by the will of his family, he should appear again in front of their eyes, as if he were alive. And it was just like that. A few seconds later, Ryuzu reappears like a miracle and all of his family members come to him to welcome him. Upon seeing this scene, Riko is paralyzed. She could never have imagined that it would be possible to bring the dead back to life. But later, back at the haunted house, Makoto reveals that his grandfather was not resurrected. That creature wasn't a ghost, it was just an image created by the Tokura family's strong desire to see their loved one again. This was what they called the afterimage, as it wasn't a real physical presence, even though everyone was able to communicate normally with it. Even during conversations, those entities would never say something that the person who died would not say. Just like the paintings of wizards in the Harry Potter universe. However, over time, the afterimage becomes increasingly pale and gradually disappears. Until, after about 20 years, it completely disappears. But when that happens, the whole family overcome the loss, and the farewell becomes easier. It had been almost 20 years since Makoto's great-great-grandmother became an afterimage, so she was almost completely gone. At this point, no one else in the family cared about her presence, as they had almost 20 years to accept her death and say goodbye. Hearing this story, Riko asks her husband if it is possible to make an afterimage of his father the day he dies. During dinner, the young man tries to convince his parents to help him make an afterimage of his father-in-law when he reaches the end of his life. However, they refuse to do so, claiming that it makes no sense for the Tokura family to bring back someone who didn't belong to them. Riko was on the other side of the door listening to the conversation and apologizes for being so selfish. Later, in her room, the girl was crying desperately and Tomoka goes there to apologize for her parents' attitude. Riko thanks her for her concern, and as she stares at the girl, she notices her face turning transparent. Before bed, she asks Makoto if his younger sister is also an afterimage and the young man confirms. He says that the girl died 10 years ago due to an illness and, therefore, she was already starting to disappear. Months later, all the older members of the family were completely gone and Riko began to participate in all the summoning ceremonies. That day, the young man had forgotten to take his lunchbox to work and Riko runs to catch up with him. When she leaves the house, she finds her husband hugging another woman and is furious. When Makoto arrives home, the young woman reveals that she saw him with Mori, her co-worker. The man admits to the affair and confesses that he intends to marry Mori someday. 
Riko claims she won't get a divorce and Makoto assures her that she won't have to. The young woman then asks how he can marry Mori without first divorcing her. And in that instant, Riko has the worst revelation she could ever imagine. Her husband says that 10 years ago, when they were about to get married, the girl had an accident and ended up dying. So Makoto begged her father to create an afterimage of her. Riko obviously cannot believe this story and the young man claims that there is a grave for her in the Ikeda family home. Knowing that it was an afterimage actually made Riko take a huge weight off her shoulders. The next day, she silently left the Tokura family's house and made her way to her house. There are only 10 years left until Riko disappears completely and the question that remains in her head is, who will go first, her or her father? Regardless of the answer, the most important thing for her was that now, finally, she had returned to her home. We now move on to the second tale of today's video, titled, Honored Ancestors. A young woman named Riza loses her memory and is taken home by her fiancé, Makita. The young man explains that he found the girl wandering in the streets after school, and she didn't even know where she lived. That night, the girl suffered from serious nightmares. She wakes up and hears someone knocking on her door. Seconds later, the door opens and a creepy caterpillar crawls into the room. The next morning, she tells Makita about this nightmare and the young man asks what could have made Riza dream of a giant caterpillar. The girl says she doesn't know what caused that nightmare, but according to her, it all felt very real and terrifying. Makita then invites her for a walk and claims it could cheer her up. They go to a park and sit on the banks of the river. While enjoying the view, the young man confesses his love for Riza and reveals that it was in that place that he said he loved her for the first time. The girl had completely lost her memory and didn't remember any of it. Next, Makita invites his fiancé over to her house. He informs her that his father is there, however, he is very sick and hardly gets out of bed. So she wouldn't even need to see him. At the young man's house, Riza asks if his father's illness is serious and the young man says yes. He used to be a novelist, but nowadays, he can't write anymore. As for his mother, she had died shortly after giving birth to the boy. Makita says that, despite not remembering going to that place, Riza has been there a few times. Suddenly, they hear a noise of something crawling behind the door and the girl asks what it is. Makita says that it's just his father approaching, but that noise makes Riza shiver. A few seconds later, the old man opens the door and crawls into the room. This was the second time he and his future daughter-in-law had met. Makita asks his father to go back to rest, as he couldn't put in so much effort. But he say that he needed to see his son's future wife one more time, before his body completely degenerates, However, Makita reveals to his father that Riza had lost her memory and did not remember that they were engaged. Then the old man says goodbye and says that he will return to his room to rest. Later, back at her house, Riza remembers the feeling she felt when talking to Makita's father. She's convinced she saw something terrifying inside, but couldn't remember what it was. Just then, her mother knocks on the door and informs her that Makita is downstairs and needs to speak to her urgently. Upon finding the young man, he reveals that his father had taken a serious turn for the worse and was dying. As his last request, he desperately wanted to see Riza one more time. Makita takes the girl by the arm and takes her to his house. Upon entering the old man's room, she finds the most terrifying scene she has ever seen in her entire life. The man had a long line of skulls stuck to his head. Together, they formed the giant caterpillar from Riza's nightmare. Makita explains that this was the merging of their ancestral skulls and very soon, when his father passed away, he would join them to keep the family connected forever. Through the fusion of those brains, his father shared all of their memories. The old man informs Makita that he won't last more than a few hours and orders the young man to do his duty, as the family needed an heir. At that moment, Riza regains her memory and says that she remembers everything that happened. Makita then asks if the young woman remembers accepting his marriage proposal and says that she would need to give birth to a child to continue that lineage. However, Riza claims that she cannot marry him and runs away. On the way, she ends up stumbling over that line of skulls and Makita manages to catch up to her. As he was about to grab her, his head starts to ache and he goes to his father's room. This is the perfect opportunity for Riza to get away. But instead, she walks to the bedroom to find out what had happened. Upon arriving there, she sees the old man's body with his skull opened, and Makita was right next to it, now he was part of that devilish skull structure. The girl screams in despair and tries to run away, but Makita runs after her. Riza is so afraid that her body is paralyzed and she loses her memory again. Will the girl's future be the same as Makita's mother's, or will she somehow manage to get rid of that diabolical family? So what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.